So good afternoon, everyone. This is the tough part of the afternoon. I see it in all of you right now. So you know how on the airplane, they teach you those like sort of exercises that get you moving again, right? You wanna do that for a minute? I see a little, a little action. Yeah, that's it, good. <laughs> Well, I'm really happy to kind of launch this research section update today. Can you hear me? Because I want to make sure the microphones are in a good spot. Um, <clears throat> IVI has a very broad portfolio of, um, of research and cholera, but we, we follow a strategy which has three main goals. The first is the ensuring OCV supplies, the kind of originators of OCV. We feel that as a continuing uh, responsibility. We continue to work with the existing manufacturers, and but one of the one of the projects in that basket I'm going to spend a little time on is the reformulation, or the simplification of the OCV that I'll, I'll talk a bit more about. One of our other goals, though, is simply improving or making improved vaccines. I mean, the current vaccine is fantastic; it's been transformative, but there are also things you can imagine that might that might be better. And also flexibil improving flexibility of use, so programmatic use of vaccines. So we pursue a couple of things. We help the manufacturers towards CTC labels, but we also have two ne new vaccines in the pipeline that I'll tell you a bit about. Our a third goal is around generating evidence to support endemic country use. And yesterday from our fabulous country collaborators, I think you already heard a bit about the ECHO projects in uh, Nepal and Mozambique and a project in Ethiopia. So I'm not gonna talk about that because you've heard enough. And this will principally be about the new vaccines. <clears throat> so first this reformulation. Um, as many of you know, the current OCV contains five components, and it has some redundancies in that there were two Ogawas, two different Inabas, plus that 0139. So there's five different bacterial components. And a couple years ago, as we thought about, well, how can we make the vaccine less costly? How can, we, can more be produced? We played with this idea that, well, could we simplify the formulation? Um, and the simplification would be removing 0139, and going down to one Anaba and one Ogawa. It's pretty, pretty straightforward. We did an analysis of what that would mean in terms of vaccine cost and vaccine supply production, and it was very favorable. You can see with this change, we expect the cost will go down and about a third or more increased production from the current manufacturers. So we took this idea to an expert group um, of independent from IVI, uh, you know, immunologists and cholera experts and said, does this make sense? And they concurred that it, that it did, that a two component sh uh, vaccine should have an equivalent protective immune response to O1. And they also agreed that O139, which had been included in the original vaccine because it was when O139 emerged and there was concern that would become a pandemic strain, which never happened. And in fact, O139 is a relatively limited distribution and it doesn't provide any cross protection. So we concluded that the public health value of the vaccine will not be diminished by removing 0139. So we took this proposal then to regulators, to the Korean FDA uh, with U Biologics, and then to the WHO PQ team. And they also concluded that this was a very rational change to make, and they approved our clinical development plan to get this new vaccine approved. So we launched this phase three clinical trial, which will register the simplified product uh, over a year ago. And we are in fact have our last patient follow up this week. And uh, the study, as you can see, was done uh, in Nepal and or, you know, still ongoing. We expect the results to be available in the first quarter of 2023. And if it is favorable, then Ubiologics will file for this new product. And so in terms of the, all the supply constraints, this will not solve everything, but it's about a 30% boost in production from Ubiologics that we might anticipate in 2023, uh, the latest in 2024. There are other, some other new products in the pipeline to make you aware of, and uh, this one is Duocall. So this is a collaboration with Jan Holmgren at the University of Gothenburg, funded by Wellcome Trust and the government of Sweden. And what Jan has done is take the, uh, the inactivated whole cell bacteria and lyophilize them into a powder, combined with the cholera toxin B subunit, and put that into an enterocoded capsule. So what we basically have is Ducarol in a capsule. Now many of you may remember Ducarol is the very first of the pre-qualified oral cholera vaccines, but somewhat difficult to deliver because it required 
uh, buffers and, um, and mixing, and it was expensive. So many of those problems have been solved. Um, on the upper right uh, picture is what the prototype capsules look like. That's not how they would be delivered. That's just the first batch and how they're being uh, managed in the lab. What would be envisioned if this uh, is viable would be more like the way you see capsules in pharmacies, which is 100 or more doses of vaccine in a uh, plastic uh, container or in uh, the uh, those other packet things. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> so what would be the potential advantages of this kind of presentation? Um, back in the original studies when Ducarol was looked at in clinical trials of actual prevention of cholera, um, it did demonstrate a higher efficacy in children under six, but for a limited period of time. So for six to nine months, the efficacy in young children was higher. And then after that, it was the same as the current vaccine. But it also provides some cross-protection to ETAC diarrhea in all ages, but also for a limited period of time. So there's some modest efficacy potential improvement with this kind of formulation. We expect right now the cost estimates is it would be similar to current products. What really might be transformative about this product is the thermal stability. Because right now, these capsules have been at 40 degrees for six months with no loss in potency. And both Jan's work and others we've talked to who've worked with lyophilization of whole-killed bacteria say these, these products, this material, can sit out of cold chain for years. So we have something potentially very thermal stable that could be stored um, in, in settings where there's no cold chain. I think also you can imagine <clears throat> that if there's 100 doses in that bottle, <clears throat> if you saw 100 doses of Uvicol, it's considerably more weight and volume. So bringing vaccine to sites in this kind of format could significantly lower product delivery costs. Obviously, you can think, all you who are in logistics are already thinking about what this could mean in terms of where the shipping and the storage and everything is much, much more compact and, and light, and also significantly less waste, as you can see. Now, we have to be realistic. There are potential disadvantages to a capsule. Children under six may not be able to swallow a capsule. So this is in the clinical development of this particular product, what we have to kind of work on is what's the age where they can reasonably swallow a capsule, and below that age, what are, are there reasonable things that can be done that are not overly complicated? Um, we've worked on the bench top with opening capsules, and within about three milliliters of liquid, you can dissolve the powder in about three minutes. So maybe that's feasible, but that is one of the challenges to work through. Where we are with this product right now is uh, we're finishing the preclinical development this year. We have proposals in for funding phase one and phase two trials. It's at the phase two level that one would tackle these issues of administration to young children. But what we're also going to be launching in the beginning of 2023 is our form of community engagement with you, which is called an uptake likelihood analysis, where we will be in touch with many of you at the country level and at the logistics level, because we really need to explore what the pros and cons or the value added of having a product that's presented like this, there will be advantages and disadvantages. And in the end, it's only if the user wants it and says that we think we could use in a different way, or it opens up a different possibility in delivering vaccine to certain settings. So we're going to be, it'll be a year long project starting in 2023. And again, um, you're the community that we'll be reaching out to. When we do that kind of analysis, we look at several scenarios that will be the, the typical reactive and preventive campaigns and scenarios where only capsule is delivered and what would that mean and for the implementers versus scenarios where there's a mixed delivery, where maybe uh, if a typical population, 15% uh, of those are five or under, then you deliver to the campaign 85% capsule, 15% liquid. So um, you have both options. Of course, that's more complicated. So these are the things that have to be worked through. Is the net, net value there to be able to bring this kind of product? I think one of the other special settings we want to look at that have been brought up by countries many, many times is about forward storage of stockpiles for rapid response. And perhaps this kind of product, with its thermostability and small, uh, small volume, makes certain things possible that are more difficult with liquid uh, presentations. So this is what we'll be exploring, not concluding. You'll be concluding. You're going to be telling us that this would work or this is how it would, would work. I have one last uh, vaccine to tell you about. Sorry, I may be over my eight minutes, but um, and that is the conjugate vaccine. 
Um, so about half of cholera cases and deaths are in children under five. We know, again, how well the OCV, current OCV, has impacted cholera control, but we also know it's not as good in children under five. And that's principally why it's not delivered through EPI. Um, we, we also know that current recommendations are for repeated dosing every three years. I'm not convinced three years is the right number, but that's what the recommendations say now. So a couple years ago, there was a preferred product characteristics meeting to, again, bring users together and say, what would be the ideal vaccine? And the things that came out of that are higher efficacy in infants and children under five, longer duration of protection, lower cost, single dose, right? Those are the holy grails for all vaccines. So about that time, we then got involved with a researcher that had developed a conjugate vaccine. So conjugates have been a tremendous solution for other bacterial pathogens. Um, and the reason is that uh, while many young children respond poorly to polysaccharides, if you link a polysaccharide in a conjugate with a protein, you get long-lasting T-cell <clears throat> dependent immune responses, often with a single dose if it's given over age one. So this is the kind of product that you can imagine, if it has long duration of protection, can be implemented through EPI. It's not necessarily a replacement for OCV, but it's another way to tackle cholera, particularly in a heavily endemic population, by immunizing the young children and building population immunity from the youngest up. So this Canada vaccine, as I mentioned, it's, it was really first developed at Harvard, and we're helping them progress it. It was protective in an animal model. It has a cost of goods analysis, meaning an estimated cost when it's finally to market that's quite favorable in the dollar range. Here it says 42 cents, but let's say a dollar would be great. Um, we finished the preclinical development, and the phase one trial, first in human study, will take place starting in August in Korea. We expect those results in first quarter 2024. And I think we'll have a better idea as to whether this is a viable approach. The next step would be to take it into endemic countries and, and test it in populations actually at risk. So I think that's it. Thank you.